She captured the world's attention back in 2009 when she ran away from her Ohio home at the age of 16, fearing that her Muslim father would kill her for becoming a Christian. Now Rivka Berry is telling her story in her new book, Hiding in the Light, and she joins us exclusively for her first national television interview right here on Fox and Friends. Wholeheartedly, we welcome you here. Thank you. It is an honor to be here. Tell us about your childhood, Rivka. Yes, well, I grew up in a Muslim home. I come from an extremely strict home, and um, I grew up very, um, in, in my culture, there's a lot of oppression, and so I found myself giving myself to my faith, and it was completely empty. And there's a couple traumatizing events that happened. I was uh, sexually violated as a child by an extended family member, and um, I was blinded in my right eye. And normally, when there's someone is abused, the shame is cast on the abuser and you're punished, but in my culture, it's cast on the victim. And so my family left uh, when I was young in order to leave that shame. You know, and it, it, you said allegedly to seek medical attention, but you believe in your heart that you left for shame because your family was being shamed. You were being shamed. I do. Yeah. So tell us when you get here, then what happens? In into the states. Yes. Yeah. I you know I completely give myself to my faith and um, saw that it was really empty um, and I wanted more. I just feel really felt constricted um, in not being able to. I mean, do simple things like eat uh, a meat or wear dresses or things like that. But more than anything, there was an emptiness in my heart, and I was completely giving myself to Islam. I mean, doing all the recitings giving myself completely, but um, when I was 13, I sought another way and did the uh, really despicable thing, which was praying to another god. And so how did that, I mean, you had to hide that from your family. I did. You would say what, you were going to school events? I was, yeah, I would, um, I was desperate just to be able to be free to worship Jesus. So I would um, sneak out and sometimes to go to prayer meetings or I would stay up late and read the Bible in the bathroom or find any possible way. You weren't able to hide that for long though? No, I was not. So your father finds out, your family finds out. Your worst fear was what? I feared being killed. Why? In my Islamic culture, there is a law called Sharia law, where if you, if a Muslim leaves their religion, you are commanded that you be killed. And there were certain events that occurred in my home that, in my, my, in my book I share a lot about my home life and how abusive it was, and my readers, I think, can understand why. It wasn't just one decision where I just decided to leave, it was an entire life of oppression. Did your father abuse you? He did, yes. Countless times? He did, yes, and I share a lot of the details in my book. Yes. Did he say he would kill you? He did. He did. And for me, it was really having lived, fearing my father, and I feared for my life. And my friends knew. I mean, I hid my faith. I was, I was constantly afraid. I had, you know, talking to my friends, we had secret codes, like the Bible was the letter. Um, my friends knew that I was terrified of my father finding out. So you leave. If you did not leave, what would have happened in your heart? Do you believe your father would have actually done that? I believe I would have been harmed, um, if not something more. I can't say, but I'm glad I left. And, and I, we don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad I left. What, could, what would you say to him today, if he's listening out there? Yes. What would you say? You're his daughter. Yes, I would say, despite everything that has happened, I love him so much, and I pray for him and I forgive him. You do? I do. The man who you think wanted to kill you? Because I've been forgiven, and so I forgive. The message in the letter, the book, the Bible, that seems to have guided you through this time and through much more, you ended up facing uterine cancer. I did. There's an expert in the book, and you talk about the power of Christ, and you, it says this, my love for Christ had been engraved with fire in my heart, it was burning in me and I could quench for the flame. I had chosen a new way. I had chosen the truth. Could you have done all this without Jesus? Absolutely not. Why? The whole reason that I'm sitting here and the courage that I had was not my own courage. I, I experienced the love of God in such a way where I had to give myself and I couldn't hold back and I had to leave. Even facing death, it's truly amazing. You know, Rifka, as we sit here and speak, particularly now, 
We know that there are so many, too many young girls out there who are in your position, or in the position you were, who will be. What do you say to them? Can you help them? Is there, is there hope for them? That is my message, is that there is hope to those who are hurting, to those who are wallowing in sorrow and grief. You know, there has been a lot of tragedy in my life, but I sit here today with more joy and love in my heart than I ever thought I could have. And, it, and, and I experienced that through Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage people through my story that there is hope, there is healing, and there is restoration. You tell a courageous story. Your message is so powerful. Rivka Barry, your book is called Hiding in the Light. I think you speak for so many today. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Now this. A major bust at the airport. What the people who are supposed to be handling your luggage, the stuff you walk in, just got caught doing. Plus, he promised to take his special friend with special needs to the prom when they were in the fourth grade. Well, guess what? That high school quarterback superstar kept that promise through all those years. The two of them are going to be here live to share their story next. She said, hey.